Now in this final part of the question, which is worth two marks, we've got to show that for all values of k, the equation f of x equals zero has real roots. And to understand this, what we've got to do is drop back to quadratic equations. Quadratic equations are the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Remember that the roots, that is x, can be found through the quadratic formula. But the nature of the roots is determined by the discriminant. You can always get real roots if that discriminant is a positive number. It's greater than or equal to zero. You don't have any roots if it's a negative number because you can't square root a negative value. But if we want real roots, roots that exist, we must make sure that this quantity, b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, must always be greater than or equal to zero. And that is the point about this question. So what we've got to say is that for real roots, we've got to show that b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, must be greater than or equal to zero. Well, we found out earlier that the discriminant, let's just write since the discriminant, okay, since the discriminant, which we found out earlier, equaled k plus 1 all squared plus 8. This is the completed the square form of the discriminant. And it's important that we use this version because we can see that whatever we've got here, since it's squared, it's bound to be positive. So since the discriminant equals this and k plus 1 all squared is greater than or equal to zero for all values of k, then if we're obviously adding 8 to a positive value, then clearly k plus 1 all squared plus 8 must also be positive, greater than or equal to zero. In fact, it's always going to be greater than zero because the smallest this can ever be is zero when k equals minus one. And so therefore, you're always going to get a value that's greater than zero, not necessarily equal to zero. So in theory, we could actually just rub that equals out. I'm going to actually just leave it like that, okay? Just greater than zero. So that should be sufficient then to show you that whatever value of k, we're always going to have real roots because that discriminant is going to be greater than zero. All right?